Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the MicroStation Connect Edition visualization video series. My name is Steve Rick, Senior Consultant with Bentley Systems. Today's video is going to be on the rendering dialog box. I've gone through a lot of the settings that we have to set before we do our rendering, the lighting, the materials, things of that nature. But I haven't told you how to actually get a rendering out of this yet. We've got our camera view on view two. We want to be in the visualization workflow, the home tab, the rendering group, and we're going to click on a button here called render scene. And that will bring up the rendering dialog box. It always comes up with the last rendering that you did. Now let's start from the top left hand corner. The first button that we see, this is a split button. A split button means that the top on here is the active command, which is the render command. And if I click on the arrow, I can get another command. The only other command in there is Fast Preview. Now, I never used to use Fast Preview in the Luxology rendering engine because it just kind of took too long. You know, we're talking three times the speed difference between View and Luxology. The Fast Preview kind of slowed me down a little bit. I really didn't like it that much. So I always just clicked on the render button. Now I can see a purpose for using this. This is really, really nice because it's so fast. So you can just click on the render button and that will render the scene. The next button here is the view that I want to render. I can set it to active view, which is what I usually leave it in, or I can set it to a view that I have a particular perspective set up and I can render that view as well. The active view is nice because I'm usually working in the camera view and all you have to do is click on the banner of the view and that makes it the active view. Down below the active view then will be path tracing or ray tracing. Choose which one that you want to do, either a path trace or a ray trace. I'll show you a little example of it later on the differences between path tracing and ray tracing. The next two boxes here are, of course, the size of the picture. We used to call it resolution, but it's not really resolution. This is not how you make your renderings finer or less fine. When I'm first assigning materials and environments and ecosystems and things like that, I usually have this down pretty low, like at 1024. The smaller the picture, the faster the rendering. Once I get fairly close to completion and I want to see some things a little bit more refined, then I set the picture size up a little bit better. 1280 is acceptable, 1920 really acceptable. And if I lock the paddle lock, then it keeps the X and Y proportions equal. If I change the top one, the bottom will change to uh, reflect that. Next, we have our light setup. I usually use active settings because that's what I'm working with in my view. I have the light set up in my active view to reflect what I want in my rendering. So I usually just set it to active. But I can actually click on this list and get my different setups here. If I want to switch to a night setup, I can switch to a night setup very easily right here. Also to the left of this, this will open up the light setup dialog box. This will be light manager. Here's my setups. So that's the same thing that populates the list. And here's all my lights in my scene with solar lighting and source lighting. The next one here used to be called environments. We call them atmospheres now. We deliver atmospheres with microstation. And then to the left of that is the atmosphere editor. I cannot create atmospheres here, but I can certainly copy them and edit them. So this is my atmosphere editor. Later on, I'll have another video that goes through the settings of this dialog box. Next, we have the resolution. This is setting up the graininess of my picture or the fineness of my picture. We have these delivered. These will come up every time I have this and I can just set. So again, when I'm first starting and I just want a quick rendering, I do exterior good. That is the lowest rendering setting there, lowest number of samples. And then if I want a final, I will go to exterior extreme. Again, as I go up in quality, it takes longer to render. 
So just keep that in mind. To the left of that is the Render Setup Manager. I can come in here and I can create new render setups if I want. And then also I have two boxes here, how it's going to react with the path tracer and how it's going to react with the ray tracer. So I have two separate settings. Path tracer, again, is what I use most of all. And right down here at the bottom is the path tracer denoiser. I have an NVIDIA card in my machine, so I'm using the denoiser from the NVIDIA card. And I can set that up in the render setups. Next here, we have relighting and NPR. Relighting allows me to change the lights in my scene post-process, so after I get done rendering. NPR, what it will allow me to do is make a watercolor or hand sketch out of this rendering. The key is, is that you have to have these boxes checked before you do the rendering, and then once you do your rendering, you'll come over here to a little arrow, and you'll fly out this menu, and here is my NPR effects and my relighting. Now, I didn't have these on when I did this rendering, so you see I don't have any relighting effects, I don't have any NPR effects, but I do have some post-rendering effects that I can play around with, like bloom, post-processing, color filtering, brightness, contract, hue, saturation, gamma correction, so on and so forth. So those will be over there, and they are available all the time. Brightness and contrast can be done post-process, so I can change the brightness of my scene post-process. I can also do this pre-process. Save image allows me to save an image to a folder of my choosing, and then I can choose whatever format I want. JPEG, bitmap, an HDR, PSD, Targa, so on and so forth. You just hit save, and it will save it to the folder of your choosing. Down in the lower left-hand corner, I can look at all of my previous renders by clicking on the button. So I can click on the rendering before this. These are a side-by-side -side comparison here. So this is a path trace. You can see how nice and clean and fresh that is. And this is a ray trace. Same scene, same view. So you can see the noise in the pavement here and on the concrete. You can see not as much definition in the brick. And if I go back to the path tracer, see how all of that just kind of pops out at you. So that is a difference between path tracing and ray tracing. Down at the bottom is the information line. It tells me how long it took the rendering to do and the resolution that I used or the size that I used to do this. You can also see here, the ray tracer actually took 3 minutes and 15 seconds, and the path tracer took 1 minute and 53 seconds. This is the rendering dialog box. Thanks for watching. Tune in a little bit later for more videos on relighting and NPR. Thank you, everybody. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.